Hello, this is Dawn Stone, aka The Conflict Chick. I am happy to be here today and I have yet another treat from one of our favorite marketers and published authors, Mr. Glenn W. Hunter. How are you doing today, Glenn? Fantastic, Don. Thank you again for um, sharing your audience with me. Let me talk about some of my latest exploits. Yes, talking about exploits. We were here just a few months ago talking about your, your business book. And now I want to talk to you about entering the world of Christian fiction. Now, rumor has it, you've just published another book and it's out on Amazon and the title is A Word from the Voice. Is that true, Mr. Hunter? That is absolutely true. Very proud of this particular book. Um, I guess they're like children, you know, you love all of them. But this one was, um, was uh, incubating for quite a while. And um, I think it just sort of simmered and all the flavors got through it. And what literally we have, I think, is something that's going to uh, be attractive to a lot of different audiences. And uh, I can't, I'm just eager to share it with more people. Oh, excellent. So you're, you're, you're right in line. So I want to know, where did the title from, come from? A Word from the Voice. You know, Tell us a little bit about it. Sort of the background from it is that it started from a blog. You, I mean, content is content, uh, but we're able to package it in more and more exciting ways now. And a few years back, I decided I wanted to take these blogs and create a story, attach a story to them. So the word idea comes from having a word of, of wisdom, if you will, that you could build upon and you would get one a week. And then I wanted to string them into a story that didn't just talk about one of weak type of wisdom, but really putting characters with it. So a word from the voice comes from um, obviously that weekly word, which now becomes a daily word. And the voice is um, in essence, the voice of wisdom. And in these times and in, in, in even past times, seems that our culture sometimes lacks wisdom. And I wanted to show a way that we can actually absorb wisdom, process wisdom, and really use it to better people. And that is, uh, that's, that's the seed of the book. You know what, we're going to dig into that book and some of those very interesting characters. But you had mentioned earlier that this started out and has been underway for some time. Talk to us about how long and really were there some, uh, how long have you been, how long have you uh, been working on this particular book? So as I said, the foundation was a series of blogs that actually go back 10 years. Um, and they started to sort of trickle out um, for a while. And I was very proud of them. I actually created a bit of an audience. Um, had some local authors following me, which means they would uh, put my work out under their umbrella, which was very kind. And it sort of ran its course. Um, so I got away from it. And a few years ago, about five years ago, I said, let me resuscitate this, but really create a story because the, the wisdom is important, but let's put character to it. Let's put, let's give it a soul. Literally. Oh. And that's how we ended up. I had to create a few more blogs to actually create a holistic story to put together. But what we ended up with is a lot of wisdom coming from some memorable characters who find themselves in some precarious situations. You know what? It's so funny that you would say that because my very next question kind of leads into that space. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about the plight of, of the overachieving young person and how that fits into your narrative. So my protagonist is a young man named JR, tall, good looking, musical, brilliant, fast rising guy in this boutique consulting firm. And it's like, yeah, everybody wants to be, they wanna be his friend or they wanna be like him. And he has it going and then his world starts to fall apart and he can't quite grasp why and so suddenly. And then we find out that there are forces that even tall, good looking, highly accomplished, brilliant young men can't, there are problems they can't even conquer alone. And I think it really speaks to today's audience where we have so many young overachievers with so much intelligence, so much enthusiasm. Um, and we're like, well, you know, can, can they process this? Yes, they can. But what you end up with is a lack of wisdom. Do you have enough scar tissue to navigate the obstacles when they come? And they start coming fast and furious for JR. Wow. I love the fact that you've tied that to a real life problem. 
that young people face and probably have faced um, for in gener- for generations. Um, but you know, you talked about Jr. and this word from the voice. Um, I, I I remember the the book opens up with scripture. And I know one of them was like Psalms nine. I remember that the Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. Mm. Talk to me about the significance of that scripture and how that really sets up your book and your character. You know, the book clearly has a Christian thread through it and I'm unashamed in doing it. It's, I, I'm working hard so that it's not preachy but these are fundamental values. I mean, they've been in our cultural consciousness for two to 4,000 years for a reason. It sustains for a reason. So I wanted to bring that part of, of me to the story and, and JR is a vehicle for that. But what it comes down to in terms of starting that, that yes, we have a set of values that are gonna be the foundation of the themes that are running through this book. And not just the values, but the challenges will be sustained by the same thing. So I'm going to be unashamed about it. But on the other hand, it's very tangible for today. Who hasn't <laughs> literally looked for mercy, looked for wisdom, looked for help from something bigger than themselves? No matter how confident and cocky I might be, at some point, I, I, need, I need a hand. And I might not want everybody to know. I might have to get on my knees to ask for it. And I wanted to capture that early and often. Because I think, again, for the younger audience, for these up and comers, there is something bigger that's going to have to sustain you as you go through life's bumps and bruises. Oh, that is so true. And I know as that plot starts to take off in your book, mm-hmm. a word from the voice, Jr. is married. Yes. He's facing a number of professional opportunities and some, some family opportunities. Can you talk to us without giving away too much? about the significance of relationships in your book? Absolutely. You know, having that, again, that, that biblical foundation, you know, and it's not cursing throughout the whole story. It's not, it's not just bubbling everywhere, but it is part of the foundation is that there's this assumption that everything has to be perfect because everything's perfect on Sunday at 10 a.m. And we all know this uh, with as much sarcasm as I can muster. But what really happens is as you adopt that foundation or whatever your base is uh, for, for your morality, it falls apart under the pressures of real life. And that's what happens with JR. Literally his wife you know, starts to get a little off the, off the beaten path a bit. And there are temptations. You know, Again, there are temptations. And um, you have to be mindful of those. And they come in different forms. And JR has to navigate that pretty much like any young person or in many cases, many old people. And I wanted to bring that humanity to this story because no matter how smart you are, you don't understand all and there are underlying reasons and then there are overarching themes that impact you and you just can't control all of them. You know, I'm not gonna give away this book, but I'm gonna tell you, this is definitely one you want to read because there are so many just really metaphors. I just love the language that you use. And, you know, I saw that in your business book, but it's even more pronounced here in A a Word from the Voice. And what I recall is the role of the church or the church, (laughs) as we call it in the South. Talk to us about the, the significance of the church and a lot of the activities that go on. I'm not gonna give away any scenes. I'm not gonna do that. But talk to us about why you as an author use the church in such an intentional way in this book and kind of how that relates to the plight of these overachieving perfectionist people that we are, although we're very imperfect. Exactly. I wanted to make sure the church was prominent because it is often the cornerstone of, of communities. And even when it's not, it remains a cornerstone of culture. So you could sit here and say, well, you know, um, I believe that I control my own destiny. Therefore, I don't need organized religion to, um, to plot my course. And I can take that position as an individual and many individuals do. But the challenge is you're still acknowledging the church by saying you're not letting it influence you. It's like saying, I'm not going to let the oxygen influence me. I can breathe when I choose. No, at some point you're going to have to take a bit of, breath, uh, of fresh air. 
So I wanted to capture that, but I also wanted to reveal, frankly, and I'm not gonna overshare, some of its imperfection. It's imperfect people with, um, in an imperfect world. And we can't escape that, even though people really do uh, a good job of um, hiding that on Sunday morning. Sometimes it does, the humanity is what's key. And these young people that I, I, I'm, I'm trying to resonate with, they understand that. They can mentally process that. But the question is, can you emotionally understand it so that you can actually have your own identity as opposed to borrowing someone else's and claiming it for yourself? And that's what I wanted to do with the church scenes. These are imperfect institutions, but that doesn't mean they're wrong. Yeah, it's like you can get something out of it. There's a lesson in every pew. There's a lesson in every book. There's a lesson in every songbook and Bible, lesson mm -hmm. in every sermon, lesson in every person sitting in that room yeah. or in that space. So I appreciated that. I really enjoyed that about the book. So, you know, we can't talk about the protagonist, Mr. J.R., without talking about his arch nemesis. So let's let the man on kind of Mr. Demond Red. <laughs> yes. Talk so, to me about Demond. <laughs> the thing from a writer's standpoint, different writers have different um, anchors, if you will. Uh, some authors want to make sure they have strong protagonists. Uh, some authors, um, they like having very vibrant communities, things that are very physically appealing, and they write very flowery language. So you can literally see what the characters are seeing and experiencing from a physical standpoint. I think great stories have great nemesis. They have great villains. So the villain I went with is someone who understands JR's pressure, who understands his religion, who understands his desire and his capacity to succeed. And he wants to use it for himself. And um, again, without giving away too much, the thing that is most important to JR, and he has to realize what it is, is now up for grabs, and he has decisions he has to make, while someone else um, with a much stronger agenda and more motivation um, is trying to keep him from achieving his goals. You I know, love the I, yes, I love that. And I love the fact that you have these little narratives within it's almost like a a storyteller's way of, of telling the story, right? Where you talk about expectations and, and you're giving them options and talking through the work. So you basically get the voice of the voice, <laughs> but you always understand the struggles of the characters in this work. So I, I've heard you talk a little bit about your audience and I'm not going to keep you too much because I know you've got things to do and places to go. And uh, we're going to get at the end of this recording, we're going to make sure that you tell everyone where to find your, your work so they can order their copies. Right. But talk to me about your audience and why you specifically chose to talk to what I call air quote, the young people and why this is so important in today's society. So the reason I targeted young people in this particular book is the fact that they're having more and more responsibility. More is coming at them from an intellectual standpoint, from a social standpoint than in previous years, uh, previous generations. And I don't think that's lost on us. I mean, old guys like me will sit there and sip our coffee and complain about these young people just don't understand or don't respect or should need to have better uh, manners. And um, we seem to, we have short memories when we get old. <laughs> but it's easy to point at them as the problem, but society has a lot of influence on them like, they, like it did with us. And I think that um, we've lost vision on some of the challenges and consequently we don't communicate as well with them to help guide them. And I think that I didn't want to, I wanted to bring that to the forefront without preaching it, but that here is a young man who's trying to do right to the best of his ability. And for all his um, positive attributes, he doesn't have all the answers. He got an A on the test, but he didn't have all the answers. 
And that's hard for young people to process, especially with the pressure they're under, overachievers, underachievers, trying to have their own voice, you know, regardless. And I'm sensitive to that. And I wanted to make sure that was revealed. Um, no matter how smart you are, you don't have all the answers. You are right about that. This book is about decision making. It's about being perfectly imperfect. It's about faith, religion, decision making, and so much is packed into these pages that I'm really going to stop our interview now because I will do a spoiler and head to the back of the book and talk about all the obstacles and what the outcomes are, but you're going to have to get your own copy, okay? So Glenn, <laughs> let's tell our audience today how and where they can find you and your works. Okay. Again, A Word from the Voice by Glenn W. Hunter. It's available on Amazon, both ebook as um, for your Kindle, for you Kindle users, as well as paperback. So again, A Word from the Voice by Glenn W. Hunter on Amazon. Um, and that's your best bet to grab it. Um, you're there, they're, they're quick, they get it out, and um, they're very efficient with it. Um, one thing I would like to do, um, and I hope Don didn't see this coming, but the first person who can email me and request a copy of A Word from the Voice, an autographed copy by yours truly, Glenn W. Hunter, the author, I will physically mail that book to you. The first person who goes to Glenn W. Hunter, Glenn W. Hunter with two N's at gmail.com, Glenn W. Hunter at gmail.com and request a word from the voice. I will pack it. I will send it. I will autograph it. So leave your name and uh, an address. And I look forward to just providing that for the audience because um, connectivity is just, that's an author's dream. So uh, I want to know people are uh, receiving it and enjoying it. Absolutely, Glenn. I just can't tell you how happy I am to have you here second time author twice in 2021. I'm like, man, you're on fire. So my last question, I promise, is this. What's next for you? Is there going to be a sequel? I have to confess, there will be a sequel to A Word from the Voice. Um, I'm not through with those characters. And I think when you read it, you'll see why. Um, you're not ready to, we, we didn't even get to the voice. The voice is, he is the voice of reason. He is the voice of wisdom and he's important. So you'll have to uh, tune in and keep an eye out for him. But um, if you can avoid Demon Red, I, I suggest you get on the other side of the street if you see him walking. But we're not done with these characters or their story or the impact that they're going to have on our society. Um, these aren't perfect characters. These aren't perfect people. But you know what? They reflect the challenges that we all face in different ways. And um, they work their way through it some way, somehow. As they should, just like us, one day at a time. Woo, one conversation at a time, one relationship at a time. So I'm going to say, those of you who are working in ministry or in companies, that, that are, are targeting or have a, a big workforce of, of younger adults who are what we call emerging leaders in our corporate spaces. These emerging leaders need to read this book because it, it helps them on so many levels. And they don't have to even be religious folks because the lessons in there are life lessons told from a Christian perspective with characters who are just like us. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate to say it, but I see a little Antoinette in my life from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> she, and, and for you to learn who Antoinette is, you have an Antoinette in your life too, if it's not you. <laughs> so it's just, how do we handle these difficult people in those difficult times and, and really navigate everything we want in life and, and, and deal with this perfectionism? Yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. a very... It's, it's a disease and it's generational. So I love the fact that your book really highlights that as well. So I thank you so much, Glenn W. Hunter, for being here. Um, his contact information is below. Go to Amazon right now and purchase that book. And in fact, purchase two or three copies, one for you and two for your friends. How about that? 
Yes. And Glenn, come back when you have your next book. I want to get the exclusive. Can I get the exclusive, Glenn? Right now, I am committing to giving you the exclusive on the next Glenn W. Hunter book. Don't All right. Appreciate you. All right. <laughs> well, I thank you for that voice because it's there, whether you're listening to it or not, right? <laughs> Thank you so much, Glenn. You have a great day. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so honored. Pleasure's mine. Can't wait to visit the, on the next one, Don. Absolutely. You take care, my friend, and congrats. Woo! A word from the voice. Get your copy. I'm about to order mine right now. So get out there and get yours. <laughs>